A very, very good evening and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, so we've been doing several workshops, several uh, panel discussions here and um, the whole thing was okay, we want to do some, we wanted to do something fun. We wanted to do something interesting this weekend. Um, and um, last week I uh, happened to catch up with Minakshi and then Minakshi had something very, very interesting to share. And then immediately I was like, okay, this needs a celebration. And then Minakshi said, okay, we need to celebrate it with the community. And then this workshop happened. So Minakshi, tell us the reason for today's celebration, please. Please share it with everyone who's joined us. Uh, thank you, Neela. Thank you so much. I'm super, super excited to finally be here. Uh, even if it's virtual, I'm really always excited to be part of anything that Gurgaon Moms do. Uh, do. I mean, you all have, uh, I mean, I've, I've constantly looked up to you and how you guys have brought it all together. I mean, kudos to the community and how it stands for, uh, for everything that I think we, um, the women community actually need this uh, more than anything else. And uh, yeah, I mean, coming to the real reason why we just decided to do this was because uh, Sidecar was awarded a number 40th position in the Asia's 50 best bars. That actually is the only Indian bar that was uh, given this award. We are actually the second in uh, that has ever happened. This is the second Indian bar. In 2017, there was another bar and this is uh, this, is, this was our chance and uh, we, we are only a one and a half year old bar, actually Saitka, but we have been in Gurgaon, we have been part of the, you know, we, we, we know all of you because of the fact that we have, uh, we have this amazing little baby called Cocktails in Dream Speakeasy and uh, we've been running it for seven years and it's super close to us and that's really the special, uh, 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 I mean, it's really special for us to be here and I think that Sidecar stands on the shoulders of Speakeasy and it's it's come to that level because we could do this and uh, and that I'm super excited. Uh, you all might know that my business partner, of course, is the this celebrity bartender, Mr. Yangdub Lama, that you can see on the screen, he's setting it up. He's at the bar right now for the workshop. And uh, yeah, I mean, we are, we are like super excited to do this. Uh, ask away your questions and we are here for you. Congratulations and um, really I'm so happy for you and Yangdo. Uh, I think our association goes way back and uh, we've known you from the speakeasy days. Uh, so to see where you've come, uh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Congratulations once again. Uh, now I think we have to uh, shift our focus to this gentleman, I think who is just getting all our attention. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the frame that he is in right now. I mean, everything looks so beautiful and so inviting. Uh, so thank you for joining us, Young Do. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, good to have you all at virtually, but definitely at Speakeasy. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. And where did your journey start? And uh, I mean, you've come a long way. So where did your journey start? Well, it all started from the Hyatt in Delhi, so I was in the Polo Lounge in 1995, where my journey in bartending actually took off. So four and a half years with, with the Hyatt, and then as a freelance bartender, doing a lot of events and weddings and stuff like that. And then, of course, a bar school in 2003, and then, uh, you know, some amount of work with, with the liquor industry as, as a consultant. Uh, but I remained a bartender throughout, you know, even now. Right. Uh, so 25 years, fixing drinks, mixing drinks, and in the process, if there's something that comes my way, I just do it. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, so today you're going to show us recipes, but you've also uh, promised us, and in fact, you wanted it to be interactive. Uh, so yeah. um, you said we can ask 
away all our questions. So those or all those who have logged in through Facebook, uh, if you have any queries, please do post it in the comments. Uh, one of us will take the questions for you to Young Duk. And, um, and those who are joined us on Zoom, uh, if you have a question, please uh, raise your hand uh, or unmute yourself and uh, do ask your question to Young Duk. Uh, so what is our first recipe for today? So we are doing two drinks, uh, and I kept it simple. And also the fact that we are not doing any complicated recipes. Uh, the idea of doing these two drinks was also to make sure that if at all you want to try these drinks, these drinks at home, uh, you could always uh, do it. It, it. it does not require too many, too many bar equipment. It just requires, uh, you know, a muddler and a glass and a few ingredients that could be, you know, from the supermarket or also from the kitchen. So the first thing that we're going to do is a, is a variation of a mojito. And the second is a slightly different style of a gin and tonic. So two drinks, simple, yet, uh, you know, very basic, but can be explored. So you can just explore these drinks and make multiple different variations of these drinks. So these are the two drinks for today. Oh, how lovely. Uh, I think <laughs> mojito is, uh, is so you know it's it's an all-time favorite and a lot of us yeah. like it how many of us like mojito here <laughs> i see the tea toasters as well raising their hands so yeah mojito in any form with without alcohol yeah, because because this is fabulous. yeah because this yeah sorry because this is an interesting drink because you could also do the mocktail version of the same you know the non-alcoholic version of the same and also the fact that it allows you to do as many variations as possible yeah so before you move on to the recipe, a question for you. What is your favorite drink? What is your comfort? <laughs> like, what is your poison? <laughs> uh, so usually I'm not a hardcore cocktail guy. I only drink cocktails when, when uh, first of all, when somebody else buys me a drink. That's when I drink cocktails. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, it's, it's, when I'm judging a cocktail competition is when I sip a few cocktails. Okay. Or if I'm checking out a bar, if I'm traveling and I need to check out a bar, which is known for its cocktails, when I drink cocktails. Otherwise, I'm a very simple, hardcore whiskey person. Oh, really? Okay. So you definitely are the best person behind the bar. I mean, imagine if you love drinking, then what happens, right? Especially with the lovely things that you come up with. <laughs> so great. All right. Let's go on to the first recipe, please. Okay. So before I even start the drink, and I'm sure all of you... I, I'm, at, least, at least most of you would have the ingredients with you, and I believe some of you would be following me in terms of making the drink um, in your respective areas. Uh, but before I even start the drink, I'll give you a little bit of a background in terms of what cocktails are, so you have a slightly better understanding. And when I say cocktails, it does not necessarily mean the alcoholic version. It could also be the non-alcoholic version of the drink. Uh, and uh, you know, so that if you, if you happen to make them at home, you have a basic know-how. If you happen to visit a bar or a restaurant and you want to try a few cocktails, you know exactly how to order them so that you know you can you can experience the best of that restaurant or that particular bar. So when we when we talk about cocktails and when we describe cocktails, it's nothing but mixed drinks. So you know the moment we start mixing uh, two or three different beverages is when it takes a cocktail or a mocktail for, mocktail format. And especially if it is a cocktail, then it has to be alcoholic in nature. And otherwise, it's just a mocktail, right? It's a mixed drink. And uh, the simple thing about these things are that a lot of times we think that cocktails can only be made by professional bartenders like me in a fancy bar. But it's not necessary because you have beautiful bars that people create. Uh, but sometimes you go to these really stunning looking bars and you do not experience great cocktails. Good cocktails can also be made at home. What is important is to understand that uh, it is all about the ingredients, right? It's exactly like cooking. So sometimes you go to restaurants, fancy restaurants, and you have uh, a not so great experience as far as food is concerned. And you just realize that you actually make better food sometimes at home. So you have a lot of brilliant talent at home or so-called home chef. So it's very similar to cocktails and mocktails as well. You know, it's about the ingredients. Uh, the important thing that one needs to know when it comes to cocktail is to understand that cocktails are best made when we use spirits. So cocktails are difficult when it is beer and wine. So with beer and wine, uh, it becomes a little difficult to create cocktails. So if you 
ever go to a bar and tell a you know like if someone somebody comes to my bar and says can you make me a red wine cocktail and not a sangria is he is really making my life difficult uh, because uh, there is not not nothing much that i can do with a red wine beyond the sangria so what i actually have to do is give him another version of a sangria which is not apple and not citrus you know probably a a slightly exotic fruit flavor that i'll incorporate into into the sangria the same thing applies to beer as well you know we cannot be too many cocktails made made with beer because it's a fizzy drink it's a light alcoholic beverage we cannot really shake it or stir it we'll just have to put flavor so it's like experiencing a lot of different styles of beer at at a, at a microbrewery very similar so when it comes to cocktails uh, it is always made with spirit and spirit like vodka like gin tequila so any spirit is is fantastic when it comes to cocktails uh the basic difference is when we use lighter spirits it's very easy because something like a vodka very easy you can just take the spirit the spirit does not have much to offer it is a spirit which has almost no character okay it's a neutral spirit so the spirit is just alcohol in nature and that's it so it's smooth but uh, the moment you start mixing it with anything and uh, for those of you who drink vodka you would realize that you can actually drink vodka with orange juice vodka with tonic what cover with coke what cover with sprite what cover with cranberry so what cover with just anything but the moment we shift from a light spirit like vodka to a darker spirit like whiskey is when mixing becomes a little difficult so even otherwise when you drink a whiskey uh, straight also whiskey is mostly whiskey on the rock whiskey neat whiskey soda and whiskey water um not too many people would actually drink a whiskey and orange juice and if somebody came to the bar and asked for a whiskey and orange juice i would prefer to first click a picture with him so that i can store it uh, with me as a memory because that's a very unusual order for somebody to ask for a whiskey and orange juice so it becomes a little unusual uh so the reason being something like a vodka or a gin will is you know almost colorless which means no character or less character any spirit that has color means it has more character so there's a little bit more to offer so when you drink or experience a whiskey there is a lot of flavor uh, you know so you invest in the flavor and the profile of that whiskey similarly if it is a rum you would invest in the flavors of rum and so on and so forth uh, so lighter the spirits easy to mix okay if you ha- ever happen to mix a darker spirit uh, the first thing is to taste the spirit so you know you taste the spirit on its own and figure out what flavors because different spirits give different flavors so there are whiskies which are spicy there are whiskies which are citrus there are whiskies which are uh, fruity and berry like so different spirits have different flavor profiles based on that is when we mix it so even when we make cocktails in the bar and if it is a cocktail which uh, requires a darker spirit we try and see what the spirit is all about so if it is a rum which is probably made out of sugar cane so slightly sweet nature then we try and mix it with things like the 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 combination of rum and coke is a brilliant combination purely because sugar and sugar sweet and sweet kind of blends well right so very basic know how similarly when we take other spirits like whiskey or rum or even even aged tequila is when we look at the spirit taste the spirit and then try and see what we can pick up in our palate and accordingly mix it okay that's the first know how what is important in cocktail making is also the lime and the sugar so cocktails are either sweet or they are dry okay and uh, cocktails it does not always mean lots of ingredients uh, because when we put a lot of ingredient there is it becomes a little bit more confusing so when it comes to a lot of ingredients leave it to the bartender let him make mess up with all the flavors uh, if you are trying your hand in cocktails try and be uh, you know try and use simple ingredients maybe 2 3 max 5 ingredients and it works well so if you put some berries and you added a little bit of spice you you exactly know what to expect you know so there is berry and there is spice uh, so you keep it simple and keep it easy all that you got to do is every time you make a drink just keep on tasting the more you taste you become a happy human being because there's some amount of alcohol going into your body uh, but at the same time you also evolve in terms of your mixing so you just get your balance right okay so that's a basic know how in terms of cocktails what is critical and what is so interesting about cocktails and why do people fancy a lot of cocktails when they go to bars is because cocktail is about 
visual experience. You know, when you see a bottle of, like, like when you see me in this frame, you get a little excited because suddenly you'll see uh, I'm in a place which is more spiritual, right, in, in every <laughs> sense, right? So there, there are a lot of bottles and uh, everybody's, you know, especially at this time, uh, you know, everybody's looking at and trying to see, uh, listening to me, but at the same time, a lot of your eyes would also be checking out those bottles at the back. And that's because it's visual, it, it appeals, right? So similarly, in case of cocktails also, it is a visual appeal. So we always eat and drink with our eyes first. And that is also the reason why glassware becomes very important. So if you, if you are somebody who likes uh, to have a nice little, small little home bar, or there are some people who love to collect alcohol, you know, through their travels, and sometimes try your hand in making cocktails at home, it's always good to have a decent collection of glassware. Uh, do, your collection of glassware does not have to be elaborate, but I always suggest four types of glassware that one should always have at home. And the four different types of glassware is to have a glass which is something like this, or maybe even smaller, like a wine glass. It's always good to have a wine glass, a standard wine glass. So one particular type of wine glass should be good enough uh, to cater to all requirements. Right? So you can serve all your wine, red wine, white wine, dessert wine into this one wine glass. Uh, and it's always good to have a glass like this, which is a martini glass or a, or a cocktail glass. So two types of stem glasses. So, you know, a wine glass and a martini glass like this. And then the third and the fourth glass is a glass like this, which a lot of times, you know, we serve a whiskey or anything on the rocks, it's served in a glass like this. And a straight tall glass, so a very basic glass. You know, it can also be used to serve water. At the same time, it can also be served used to serve anything like, like a whiskey soda or even a rum and coke or a, even a gin and tonic or a vodka tonic. So these are the four types of glassware if you do not want to elaborate on your, on your glassware. But these are the four basic types of glassware that one should always have at home. It's, it's, it's nice, okay? The important thing that we need to understand over here is very basic. These are glasses which has a stem and these are the two glasses which comes without a stem. Uh, when you have a glass without a stem, Technically, it means you can you can add a lot of ice in there. Uh, but glasses like these, for example, a wine glass, no no ice. Your wine can be chilled or your wine can be room temperature. But anything with a stem means uh, no ice in there. Okay, and always hold the glass by the base or by the stem. So keep it away from the body. Okay. So this is a very basic. The glassware is an important aspect of a cocktail because it enhances the look of the drink. Okay. Now coming to the drink aspect, what we're going to do is we're going to make the first drink. And the first drink, like I said earlier, is a variation of a mojito. And uh, if you look at a classic mojito, it is made with uh, mint, lime, sugar, and rum. So these are the four ingredients of a mojito. Always made with a light rum, uh, like, like this. So uh, a rum that is, so when we, when we look at this rum, we always say it's a light rum. Not a white rum, it's a light rum, which means the color, there's no color in the rum. And it is called a light rum because it's light in terms of its character. Okay, so uh, we use a light rum and then we use fresh mint, fresh lime, some sugar, and muddle it. So that's a classic mojito. And this is a drink that originated in, in Cuba, it became very popular. And I was just talking to a few gentlemen who are into cocktails this afternoon. And I was telling them, they were all asking that, you know, mojito is such a popular cocktail and you can actually get a mojito in any nook and corner of the world. Even if you walk into a small little neighborhood joint, you can actually expect mojito. Uh, and that's because it has these three flavors, which works with all palate across the globe. So there's, there's mint, lime, and sugar. These are the three flavors, which is a win-win situation in case of a mojito. What we're going to make is a variation of the same. And today what we're going to do is use fresh mango puree, okay? So what I've done is it's taken a mango and converted that into a puree, uh, chopped off uh, the mango, just the skin is off, the seed is off. It's only the pulp, which I've blended with a little bit of water uh, to make it, uh, give it a nice flowing consistency. And then along with the mango, I have fresh mint sprigs. So I'm going to use fresh mint, the mango, a little bit of lime and sugar to balance the flavor. And then of course, the light rum and lots of ice, and then finally top it up with 
your preference of either a soda or a sprite okay so if you're doing sprite if you like sprite and i would suggest you do a sprite because the advantage with sprite is it's a nice lemonade on the sweeter side so if you're doing sprite then the initial preparation do not put any sugar because the sprite will contribute the sugar to the drink so it's just nice and balanced okay so shall we start oh yes okay so as we make the drink if you have any questions you are most welcome to ask so you can interrupt me interrupt me whenever you feel like so we take yeah. a straight yandu uh, neela there are some questions on the okay. chat box if you could just about okay yeah, the I'm, totally computer, so I'm not be able to access them yeah we'll read it out for you preeti do you want to start with your question yes yes i wanted to ask uh, what would be the best kind of mango to make this mojito uh because That's we have kind of mango mangoes available uh so whatever mango uh, season you know you know whatever mango is available i think it's fine it just that the mango should not be too sour so it should be a mango which is nice and ripe sweet slightly on the sweeter side yeah slightly on the sweeter side is fine so yeah uh, there are okay. some mangoes i do not know the technical the names actual yeah, yeah, of the yeah, mango yeah. but there are they're not very sweet but so if the mango is on slightly on the sweeter side it's a it's a good mango to have for a cocktail version okay i did the puree with the safeda that's the sweetest the nice and sweet okay. pulpy mangoes that we can get these days so oh yeah so you so you you already very close to making a delicious cocktail then no i'm just very close to mangoes <laughs> <laughs> cocktails i have to learn from you <laughs> so no, yeah the mocktail yeah okay. <laughs> so next we have a question from tanmay uh is tanmay uh -huh. here do you want to unmute yourself and ask away the question Okay. I think he's going to fetch fetch some alcohol for that. Okay. Okay. Got it. Oh uh, no, sorry. That this is me. I'm Shreya. I'm now in some sunness. My question is: Hi, Amber. Thank you so much for hosting this. Uh, I I don't have strike, so I'm going to use soda. I also am running short on mint today. So, what would you suggest as an alternative? I know that mint is quite a crucial ingredient. But you're short on but, what you said? Mint. Mint. Yes. Oh, okay. So you know this is a dual flavor cocktail. So there's mango and then there's mint. So right. if you do not have the mint and you still want to stick to the dual flavor, do you have some chaat masala or rock salt at home? Black yes, salt. yes, I do, I do. So the mango rock salt is a nice combination. Even mango and chili. You can use okay. uh, a little bit of chili. Okay. Thank you so much. See, Neela, okay. smile got bigger with that chili mention. I love the mention of the word. Yeah, no, red chili or green chili. <laughs> huh? Red and then chili. Suddenly, or... The next question will be, what species of chili? <laughs> Are you going to make my life more difficult? <laughs> okay. Okay. Any more questions? When do we start? Yeah. So let's start. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is, uh, we'll take the mint first. and usually when i say mint a lot of people you only take the leaf but what i do is it's always nice to take the mint with the stem so we take a mint sprig chop up the bottoms the, the roots and all which has all of the mud and then wash it properly and use a few sprigs so i've got about four five sprigs of mint okay so i take five sprigs of mint and i'm just going to not break them but just bend them so just hold them and let it go inside that glass okay so four sprigs of mint the reason why we take the stem is because the flavor in all of these uh, herbs they, it lies in the stem so whether it is a basil or a mint or even even uh, the the coriander the flavor there's more flavor in the stem so the idea is to retain those flavors into the drink okay so with the we take the mint sprig and then the mango puree so what we need to do is take approximately about so we're going to pour about 45 ml so when we do cocktails although we have measures and we always say 45 ml 60 ml uh, it's not necessary to be accurate because we cannot be accurate even bartenders like us we are not always accurate but we are very close so when i say 45 and you pour a 43 it's okay there's no problem okay and uh, if i say a 60 and you pour 65 uh, you always emerge as a happy human being so it always works when it comes to cocktail making okay so 
approximately about 45 ml of the fresh mango puree. And to this, I'm going to add, so to this, I'm going to add about 10 ml, about 10 ml of the lime juice. Now, if you do not have a peg measure at home, the best is to take a teaspoon or a, or a, or a soup spoon. So if it is a teaspoon, so approximately three teaspoons of lime juice. And that's an easy thing because uh, not everybody might have a peg measure. But I'm going to be pouring about 10 ml of the lime juice in there, okay? And then we will just model it. So usually a modeler would be something like this, but a lot of you may not have a modeler at home, but uh, you might just have the billin. So I'm sure everybody makes roti. So we could use that as an alternative for a modeler. And the idea is to just make sure that we press it good enough to extract the flavor out of the mint, but not break the mint. So otherwise, uh, I've done some sessions for bartenders in the past, and when we did trainings on mojitos, sometimes it resulted in the, the mint being crushed so badly uh, that it became a, it's like, it's like minced mint. You know, so that's not the idea. The idea is to just press it hard enough to extract the flavor and uh, the mint still remains intact, okay? So press it gently and then twist it a little bit and the flavors are all out. And when we nose it, we get a nice combination of the mango and the mint. So it's nice and refreshing. There's a strong flavor of the mango and then of course the mint as well, okay? So beyond this, since I'll be using Sprite to top it up, so I will skip the sugar syrup and then get straight into pouring the alcohol. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, the standard pour in most uh, cocktails, when we do cocktails, we always make sure that the standard pour of alcohol is 60 ml. So 60 ml is a good measure, and 60 ml in a normal pour is a large, so which means uh, a large pour of spirit. So if I'm doing two different types of spirits, then it's either 45, 15, 40, 20, uh, but do not go beyond 60. So beyond 60 in terms of cocktail will make, make it too alcoholic in nature. And below 60, you will not feel that it's a cocktail. Okay, so the idea is to stick to the 60. It's a good measure. Uh, but again, since it's a little early, maybe. Not really. It's about 7.30. So I think it's just right for a 60 ml pour. <laughs> so we'll pour a 60 ml of the light rum in there. Okay, so 60 ml of light rum in there, and I'll just give it a gentle stir to make sure that everything is mixed well. And then the next thing, which is a very important thing in cocktail making, if you're preparing cocktail or for that matter, fixing any drink at home, is the ice. So with ice, you know, we especially bartenders, if, if, if we all understand ice and we know how to use the ice properly at the bar, we always end up making a good tasting cocktail. So more ice means better tasting drink. Okay, and uh, if you ever go to the bar and tell a bartender, can you fix me a cocktail without ice? Uh, you are not doing good to the bartender at all. You're making him a very, very unhappy man. So usually cocktails are always with ice. Please remember this. If, you're, if you ever try to drink a cocktail without ice, Tell them you can shake it or stir it with ice, just pour me a straight up drink. So the drink is anyways chill because if the cocktail is not cold, you will get something which is called the harshness of alcohol. So, so the taste of the drink, you know, the reason why some cocktails do not come out well is because we've used very less ice in the drink. So in, a, in case of a mojito, it's all about loads and loads of ice. So I'm going to just fill it up with lots of ice. Okay, so you notice that I put lots of ice in there. Uh, and in, in, in cocktails or mocktails, okay, before I even go to finish off the drink, uh, is there anybody who is making a mocktail version of the same? Yes, we have Anshu. Okay, so if you're making a mocktail version, no? Okay. All right. I have a if, pomegranate if, version. Pardon? I have a pomegranate version. I don't have mango puree. 
Okay, so you can use the pomegranate also. Yes. It's the same thing, you know, you replace the mango. So even pomegranate and mint is a good combination. Yes. All right. So what we're going to do is we fill it up with lots of ice and there is no standard measure of ice. So I will never ever say six cubes of ice or 10 cubes of ice. I will always say lots of ice. And so the idea is you just pour enough ice that fits into this glass. Okay. Okay, I always thought a lot of ice will dilute the taste of it, but uh, yeah, probably that's a learning today. I was going to ask yeah. that for you all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the it's the other way around. Actually, more ice means less dilution. Less ice means more dilution. Oh. So if I am pouring, if 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 at home you're pouring a vodka and tonic, sorry, a vodka on the rocks or a whiskey on the rocks, I've seen even in bars sometimes when I ask for a whiskey on the rocks. They fill half fill the glass with ice. They only put a few ice cubes and then pour the spirit. I always say the moment somebody says whiskey on the rocks, it is actually he actually means lots of ice. So whatever number of ice that fits into this glass, I'm first going to fill it up with ice and then pour the whiskey. So what will happen then is that my drink, my last sip is not melted ice. My last sip is still the taste of whiskey. So in, it's the same thing that applies to a cocktail also, because if I pour less ice, what's going to happen is this cocktail is going to be diluted. So by the time you're halfway through, your cocktail becomes very watery, okay, because the ice would have melted. But when you put more ice, what happens is the drink becomes cold faster. And once the, the drink and the ice is almost at a similar temperature, the, the melting process slows down and therefore you know your your drink will not get diluted so more ice is better actually okay okay and then finally we're going to just top it up with sprite so if we don't so you can do sprite and if we are using the chili chili powder then shall we add it now if i don't have mint okay so the chili powder you could add it now and give it a stir so whatever ingredient, so if it's chili or Tabasco or the chili powder or the chaat masala, we just add it and then give it a stir. Okay. Yeah. Are we, yeah. uh, did you also add uh, chili to the mango puree? If you want to add the green chili that you're cooking ahead? You can, in the beginning? Yes, in the beginning. In the beginning, the only thing, the only thing you got to be a little careful when we put chili is, not to muddle it. So usually when I do chilies in the bar, I only put the chili and just press it once and that's it. Because if I muddle it a bit too longer, that it becomes too chilly, you know, it becomes too hot and then it starts oh, to, okay. and especially in the drink format, after the second sip or the third sip, uh, it is not very pleasant. So the idea is that, that whenever we use chili, the idea is to use a hint of chili as, as far as the flavor is concerned. Okay, okay. Thanks. So, or, or, or the best is, you know, if you want to play safe, the best is you just make a slit, let the drink come in there, and then just drop the chili in there. So, it'll just, it, it is, it'll lend the flavor, but it will not spoil the drink. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, finally, what we do is we just pour Sprite again. In this case, there is no specific measure of Sprite. So, whatever little space that you have on top, you just fill it up with Sprite. And uh, just gently stir it. Okay. And the last but not the least, it's very important to make sure that we garnish the drink. So because it has mint, so I'm just going to put a few sprigs of mint on top of this. So it's a nice summery, tall cocktail, which is also great uh, to, to kind of sip. Uh, in a nice hot summery afternoon. So it's a nice, nice drink, very seasonal, refreshing. Uh, the drink, although it has 60 ml of alcohol in there, will not taste too alcoholic in nature. It's much more fruitier and minty, so it's nice, tall, and cool. So that's a, a mango and mint mojito for, for all of you. Uh, Cheers. I do not know if everybody has a drink. What I'm just going to do is I just hope, is this the first drink for everyone? Yes, at least for me. <laughs> yes. Okay. Sure. Nobody's a few drinks down over here, right? So it's the first drink. 
<laughs> think yeah, the first thing so <laughs> and actually so, you have to think... speak for yourself <laughs> so whenever so whenever, whenever i do whenever i do workshops and i do you know we do a lot of these workshops at a bar so i always say when we make the first drink we always make the drink and before we sip it we make an offering um, and it's always good to make the offering especially at these times these times when there is a lot of corona virus around us so with the help of your ring finger just do this three times okay <laughs> so there has to be there has to be a lot of usually in the past we were talking about positivity at this point of time i'll say let there be more negativity around us okay <laughs> so uh, so everybody around us should be happy including the covid 19 and not attack us uh, and then and then we can sanitize ourselves from the inside okay cheers everyone Oh, this looks cheers. lovely. Cheers. So, uh, cheers. cheers. So, speak tea is also known. I mean, along with the yummy and uh, delicious cocktails that you make, uh, you're also known for the snacks that you serve. I, I mean, I still, uh, you know, I can't wait. Once the lockdown is over, we'll be back there again. Uh, but tell us, what is your favorite snack that can that will go with this drink, uh, Young Book? With this one. Yes. So presently, what we've done at, at over here at Peaks is, you know, we have a Himalayan cafe upstairs. So that's yeah. converted the the ground floor is Lungta. So we do a lot of Himalayan food, uh, a few recipes that my granny used to make, and we have all our guys working in the kitchen from Nepal. So we do a lot of Kathmandu style food and a lot of food from the Himalayan belt. Okay, and there's something called uh, the Newari roast chicken, which is which is also loved by a lot of people who are regulars here. Okay. the newari roast chicken roast should be brilliant with this one but if you want to try a little something a little spicy the speakeasy uh, chicken wings mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's different but yeah. it's really nice yeah i got to experience it a lot of times whenever i'm here and you know i have a hard evening right. uh, that's that's something that i really enjoy and also the fact that it's a little spicy there's a hint of spice in the food so it works well with the the minty mango flavor you know there isn't and it spice in the drink so it just can't kind of complement so you bite into the chicken wings it's nice hot and spicy and then you have a sip of the cocktail and you are on cloud 9 yeah. <laughs> so just before we could uh, start uh, we were just discussing about what snacks uh, our guests have got with them uh, to accompany the drinks that they were going to make today uh, so shubha has something special shubha show us what you have and uh, tell us what it is it looked interesting yeah so can some anyone guess yeah. it's vegetarian but uh, um I just got a toothpick here looks like a tikki of some sort <laughs> yeah so it's a kebab but it's made it has some interesting ingredients i just googled and i got this idea so it's a idli kebab something new that i learned oh. today <laughs> so the noble uh, in the, you know the humble uh, idli has uh, become a fancy uh, starter today it's a idli Tensa kebab thank you subha hi thank you so much i said <laughs> and yeah. is there a, is there a specific dip to go with that uh, the kebab So uh, when I googled well? and I saw uh, it's the green chutney, the with the chutney yeah. dal, not the mint and coriander one, but with the chutney mm -hmm. dal. But I have a mint and coriander green chutney today, and I saw that uh, it is being served in uh, you know short glasses filled with the uh, green chutney, and then the idli on the toothpick. You can just keep it there, and then yeah, unfortunately we can't see all that now. But then yeah, that's something interesting that I googled today. Lovely. I can do something with the chutney probably. Yeah. Pick ah, okay. it up. Okay. Pick it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Smoking like yeah, a that's yeah, but that's lovely. but that but that's interesting. You know, the idli kebab is interesting. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, I have I have a a malu wife, so I'm going to go back home and suggest the idli kebab. <laughs> I'm, and I'm going to do a, and, no, and I'm going to do a nice combination. You know, what strikes my head at this point in time is with the idli because it's it's a uh, you know it's much more almost like bland when it comes to taste so therefore the dip becomes very important yeah. i was just thinking if you do the if you do the idli with something nice and spicy like a, like the himalayan dalle chutney i think it should do wonders the idli kebab with the with a yeah, nice yeah fried idli chutney. is very uh, fried idli is very popular cocktail idlis those are all the spicy and uh, 
you know, uh, better versions of it. Hmm. I can oh, already fantastic. see Upasna, the <laughs> enthusiast. She has her drink ready. Upasna, show us your drink. Did you just make it now? Wow. Oh. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't have mint, so I'm just having the mango and lime and it's amazing. At the chili. Yeah. Chili, I have to go and get it. So I'm not going. <laughs> you could also, yeah, if you don't have the mint, you could also maybe use basil or something. No, Yangdo? Uh, with mango? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mint and uh, mint and basil is also a nice combination. All my mint is in the freezer, so if I bring it, it's going or, to be black. Or, so. or in the present times, you could also do tulsi. Oh, tulsi, yes. tulsi. The holy basil is also <laughs> mango and tulsi. So, you know, how much it, it helps your immune system, I don't know, but it will just make your soul much more happier. <laughs> just the thought of just the thought of Tulsi in the present time uh, makes you feel that you are safer. <laughs> for sure, for sure, yes. Uh, so Suja now has um, uh, she's put together puzzles, interesting puzzles. Uh, so that's a surprise for our guests who joined in today. Um, Suja, please start. Yes. You now after so all I, the I, I think uh, spirit and uh, uh, riddles, I think they are a fabulous combination, according to me. Yeah, so after all the <laughs> yeah, after all the soul talks, I think we are ready to go on uh, embark on a spiritual tour of a different kind now. <laughs> so let's check our knowledge of the different uh, stops along the way. So I put something small for y'all. Let's check it out. Yeah. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay. So welcome to the spiritual trail. Yeah, we'll start with the appetizers as we are normally go on a trail. The first thing we stop for are the appetizers. So this famous brunch drink was featured in Life magazine under the name Red Hammer. It also signifies the color of the drink. So any guesses, we'll give you some clues and some visual aids also to guess the drink uh, as you go along. So any guesses? Is it a cocktail or a... Yeah, it's a cocktail. It's a cocktail drink. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, yeah. Yes, you are right. You didn't have to look at the other clues. <laughs> so there's a very interesting story behind this. The name of the drink is inspired by Queen of England who was very famous for chopping off the heads of a particular section of the society when there was a, a conflict between the Protestants and the Catholic in those days. So because of that, her name was Mary, the Queen of England's name was Mary and, you know, it translated to a swear word because nobody liked the Queen in those times. So, okay. and this was a visual clue if you didn't get it, but you all are brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so... This is the final, this is the drink, Bloody Mary. Yes. Would you like to go on to the second one? Yes. Yeah. Next, let's get naughty here. Which is the favorite cocktail of honeymooners? Sex on the beach. Sex on That's the, the beach. more popular one. I took a different one. Yes. It's a different one. <laughs> if, they don't, if they don't go to the riverside, then, <laughs> or a beach side. <laughs> you go to the hill station. NCR, <laughs> NCR. Okay. It is also referred to as a maiden's prayer. That is tough. At least try. Give it a try. I mean, um, you can yeah, I would. guess. Guess something. Anyone? 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 Another clue? Yes. It's a sexy little drink in which rum and brandy get together for some fun. And I think this visual clue maybe help you all. So this is a clue. <laughs> Literally, this is a clue. If you all can get it. This is between the sheets. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Yes, absolutely. This nice. is the uh, recipe card for the cocktail. And this is the drink. Okay. Who got it right? Who passed uh, it? No, no, no. No, no. no I, 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 I no, answered, I mean, but that was only the visual clue, finally. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
I found Next. the visual clue very distracting, <laughs> Minakshi. <laughs> you know, so. Everybody should know. Okay. Next one. <laughs> this, let's sip and spy now. We all know who this is, of course. Mm -hmm. If you're a Bond <laughs> fan, then you must have seen him sipping it. It's his favorite drink, but had the wrong way. It's supposed yeah. to be stirred, but he always wants it shaken. Shaken, yeah. So can we answer or Martini? Martin. Yes. Martin. I like I like that you've chosen Daniel Craig for this. I <laughs> swear. <laughs> Forget about the other box. <laughs> because then all will be drooling over it and not move on. So <laughs> the least popular of the bonds. <laughs> so is and it's a bit and there are various, I think the uh there are various variations of this dry, ma dirty martini, clear martini, and all that. So now it's time for some rock and roll. This cocktail is named for its appearance regarding how it is served with gradations of color resembling a sunrise. So the color resembles the sun, the different shades. And so Parul has is, uh, given yeah, an answer in the chat. Yeah, I'll what is it? Help and guess. Sunrise. She said, "Pardon? Yeah, but there is something. There's a pre, another word before it. She no, she's written tequila sunrise. Okay, okay. I'm not able to see the chat screen because I, I okay. don't know for whatever Parul, reason. Okay, you can unmute yourself and say it. Yeah, Parul, you're right. Bang on. Uh, yeah, hi, tequila sunrise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You bang on because it was Mick Jagger who made the drink very popular. He had it probably in Trident at 1972. He liked it so much. So wherever his band worked." around the world they used to specifically ask for it and so now we know what's the secret behind their various moves yeah, yeah. and it's hot vibes <laughs> yeah <laughs> so this it looks it looks beautiful no yeah. I want to grab one right away <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we'll carry on or uh, we are uh, taking a break with another uh, recipe card yeah we'll go to our next recipe now Thank you, okay. Suja. That was very interesting. We'll come yeah, for the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good one. Yeah, that was nice. Uh, Thank you. And Thank honestly you. speaking, I did not, it didn't strike me that it was between the seats. It, I was just thinking, what could be a drink which has both rum and brandy? Oh, it didn't okay. strike my head until Minakshi said between the seats. <laughs> okay. And we have a bar called Sidecar. So when you add rum to that drink called Sidecar, yes. it becomes yes. a between the between sheets. Between the sheets, yes. Quite I interesting, did. yeah. Yes. Uh, so very interesting. Very nice. Thank you so much. Okay, so quickly into the second ring, which is much more simpler, much more nicer, and also gaining a lot of popularity nowadays in the cocktail drinking circles. Okay, so this is a, a, a simple variation of a gin and tonic. So a, a simple gin and tonic would ideally be uh, a good measure of gin in a glass like this, preferably a goblet glass. If you do not have a goblet glass, you could use even a normal wine glass is fine. Otherwise, you can just do it in a straight, uh, normal straight glass like this as well. Uh, but in bars, in order to make it look nicer, we put it in a, in a fancy glass like this, which is a, a, a gin goblet or a, or a gin and tonic goblet. But interestingly, if the glass is big, what fills the glass most is the ice. So what takes most of the space in the glass is the ice, okay? So the simple pour, and this one over here is a variation because what we have over here is an infusion of gin with raisin and cloves. So it's a slightly spiced up gin. So you could, you could take any gin, infuse the same with the cloves and the raisins for almost 24 hours, and you get a, a nice and flavored gin. So, and, and that can be used uh, to make cocktails like these, and the raisins and the, the, the spice can be used to... to you know, make your cakes or if you're going to bake them or you could also use it in some of the dishes like like if this is used in when we make uh, the, the kheer even if it works quite well over there because when we cook the alcohol is almost gone uh, but we still utilize the, uh, the spices okay so it's a nice spiced up gin and tonic so all that we're going to do is pour this uh, lots of ice tonic and then give it a squeeze of orange okay so again, a 60 ml pour in there. Okay, and a little bit about infusion. So any alcohol can be infused. 
okay, any alcohol can be infused. But the best alcohol to infuse when it comes to spices would preferably be rum or whiskey. So rum and spice, and you must have heard of spiced rums. Okay, so ginger, clove, uh, you know, uh, even cardamom does very well with rum. Okay, so spice, uh, you know, when it comes to spices, rum is great. Uh, gin also works. Now, when we use gin to spice it up, a lot of times we take a very standard pouring gin. When we go to delicate gins, we do not use spices. This one is a very basic gin, so therefore I thought we'll do it with spices. Otherwise, gin is great with herbs. So any of these uh, green herbs or even, even berries. So it works quite well with berries as well. So dried berries and gin infusion is a wonderful infusion. Okay, and then to this, what I'm going to do is just fill it up with lots of ice. So that's good enough ice in the glass. Okay, loads and loads of ice. Uh, and then finally, I'm just going to top it off with tonic. You know, lately, since the, uh, the third lockdown has allowed us to do takeaways and we cannot deliver alcohol. What we've come up with a lot of these interesting bar mixers, you know, uh, and uh, these are basically pre-mixed, uh, you know, cocktails, which is without alcohol. And a lot of them are very, so there is one which is uh, elderflower and uh, cucumber. So the cucumber elderflower combination works well with something like this. It, it can also be in a mocktail version. So just top it up with tonic. Okay, so this is basically a spice gin with tonic, and if you look at the color, it's got this nice brownish color. Uh, and then we finish it off with a fresh squeeze of orange. So I'm just taking an orange, and what I've done is I've just cut the orange into, an, into a wedge. Okay, so slightly from the side, just to ensure that there are no seeds. And what I do is I squeeze the orange, okay, and then just press it against the rim and drop it in there. So this becomes a nice spicy gin and tonic with a hint of citrus, especially in the first few sips. So when I, when I go close and try to sip the drink, I get this nice fresh aromas of orange right on top. So the orange oil that revolves around the drink, at least for the first few sips. And that brings it and gives it a nice refreshing flavor. Okay. So simple drink. Uh, if you want to experiment, you can make a lot of variations. Sometimes, with the, with the same thing, instead of the orange, what you could also do, do is take a cinnamon and just burn the cinnamon. So we just lit the cinnamon with the help of a lighter. So let it burn for a while, release the smoke flavor, and just dig, dig it into, into the drink. So it wow. adds that wow. nice smoky cinnamon flavor. Uh, so a lot of these are, if you, if you look at these cocktails, cocktails, it's very experimental stuff. You know, it's not something that is uh, difficult to achieve. So like I always say, you know, cocktail making is no rocket science. If you have that inclination towards flavors, you can always create great cocktails at home as well. Uh, but you come to the bar for happiness. When you sit at home and drink your favorite cocktail, it does not taste so good. When you come to a fancy bar like this and have a bartender like me, it becomes much more tastier. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Okay, <laughs> okay so that's a simple gin and tonic, uh, nice and easy. The cinnamon tip is, uh, I mean, it, it got all of us go, wow. Do you have any other tip like that for us? Yeah, so, uh, so there's cinnamon and uh, you could also do cardamom. So the other way of doing it is, uh, mm -hmm. if you want to be experimental and you're okay doing it, is to just take the gin as is. So we do not do any infusion. What you do is you take a few spices and drop it inside the glass. So we do something like this at the bar at times. So... A few spices, we just drop it inside the glass. So it could be a combination of cloves, cinnamon, uh, cardamom, and then pour one shot of gin in the glass itself and then lit it. You know, so, but that requires a little bit of uh, professional touch. You know, that becomes a little difficult. So you might just, uh, end up burning your hand or your lips. But otherwise, what we also do at times is just clean it that way. Uh, but, if you, but if you want to keep it simple, you could do the same thing even with the orange peel. Uh, I'll just show it to you, okay? Lighter. So 
So what I've got over here is an orange peel. So what I'm going to do is, this is the, the previous one, the first garnish that I put over there was just simple orange squeeze and drop, right? Now this is the same thing, but I'm going to just do a burnt orange flavor. So uh, I just take a lighter and oh. drop it in there. So what will happen is I just release the oils of the orange on top of the drink and it will give a nice burnt flavor, okay? Uh, I did it with a professional blow torch, but you can also do it with a normal lighter at home. That, that is also possible. So you'll be much safer. Uh, the other things that you could do is, uh, you know, you could use things like slice of cucumber. Okay, so mm -hmm. cucumber is a brilliant and it's most, you know, it's available in most of the kitchens. All that you do is you make a gin and tonic, a normal gin and tonic. We are not talking about spice gin tonic. We just do a normal gin and tonic with lots of ice and just pick up a cucumber from the kitchen, cut it into a long slice and just place it inside the drink. That is good enough flavor uh, to incorporate into your gin and tonic. So it becomes a nice tasting, you know, a gin and tonic with that hint of cucumber. Uh, similar stuff can also be done with uh, it's also watermelon season, so you can also drop a few slices of watermelon in there. What it does to the gin tonic is it's a nice fizzy drink. It just adds that hint of extra flavor from here and there. Okay, so very basic. You could also do similar kind of stuff with sweet lime. So even sweet lime or squeeze and drop brings in that nice citrus note into your into your drink. Well, that's lovely too. Thank you so much. Can I, can I have a sip now? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Okay, any questions? Oh, Upasana. Upasana has some oh. snacks ready. Oh, Upasana. Wow. What was that? Th that's my drink. That? Okay, oh, that, that's a cocktail stick? It's a it's a shame. Okay, sir. Oh, okay, okay. It's supposed to be I a just, high five. I just, oh, I was just wondering what kind of a garnish was that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that is a cinnamon stick and uh, those Sri Lankan sticks, you know, those big ones. So I actually infused with cinnamon and cloves because I didn't have a reason. Mm. And it's awesome. Okay. It's lovely. Really nice. Okay, so that's my snack platter. Just hang on. Uh, I hope you all can see it. Wow. What is okay. it? Crackers, <laughs> dip. So that's beetroot dip. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, I, you may have seen me eating it with carrots and crackers. It's very healthy. And as you all know, I make a lot of salads. So this is today's salad of the day. Uh, again, embracing my South Indian, what should I say, heritage. <laughs> So this is black chana, raw mango, coconut, and just lemon and salt and pepper. And of course, I added some pomegranate. So this is super tangy and super healthy. Very yeah. nice. Excellent. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 That's like Cheers. Sweet snacking and uh, yeah, happy drinking. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll share these recipes on our website at uh, www moms.com Meanwhile, uh, Youngdoop, you also shared about the pre-mixes that you have. Uh, mm -hmm. That was interesting. So tell us a little bit about the pre-mixes that you have. What are the different uh, uh, flavors that you have and um, how does one go about getting this, buying this? So it's very simple. We have at the moment about six different variations of the pre-mix. Uh, and uh, some of the interesting ones are flavors like apple and cinnamon, which we, you know, it's a very, so what we've done is we've identified some of the hot selling cocktails in our bars. So in both the bars, there are certain cocktails that does extremely well. And we've identified those flavors and converted that into a ready to drink mocktail version. So all that you have to do is just add alcohol if you want to. Otherwise, if you, do, you want to skip the alcohol, you can also drink a mocktail version of the same. Okay. And it's very simple because most of this, serves approximately six, so it's slightly concentrated, but they're all natural flavors, so no artificial flavors. The shelf life is about 12 days uh, if you keep it in a refrigerated uh, condition. And uh, uh, there are flavors like, you know, like I said earlier, cucumber, elderflower, 
which is more of a concentrate and uh, you know you just pour approximately about 30 20 to 30 ml of the same pour a gin lots of ice and tonic and you get a nice refreshing flavor so that works well with gin there are flavors like this one is a very special one that we release only for this week because we had the pandan infusion uh, that we had made so we this is a pandan old fashioned okay so old fashioned is a very popular cocktail with whiskey and a lot of our regulars love it so this one over here is pretty concentrated so therefore we use about 20 ml of the same so this is a this is good enough to serve eight drinks so it can actually be used for eight drinks and then of course the apple cinnamon strudel which is again a very popular drink at both the bars so it's a combination of apple and cinnamon uh, and uh, this also serves approximately about six serves so it's a nice all that we need to do is just add rum or whiskey or if you want to do a mocktail version all that you have to do is take this if it is a mocktail version then the pour is a little high so if, you know instead of a 20 ml or a 30 ml you pour a 60 ml lots of ice and you could top it up with something like soda because everything else is already there so it becomes nice and tall and easy you can even cut a few slices of apple and drop it inside the drink so these are some of the uh, the common ones that we have so we have a few more that uh, that that's not made at the moment so what we do is whenever we get orders we just make them and then package it and send it across Hey, <laughs> mention that um, I tried the apple cinnamon strudel pre-mix and I tried yeah. it with whiskey, young dupe and minakshi and it was fabulous is not the word, you know, <laughs> I was like. I, I, I got your really like, you know, uh, this is, this is, there's a very famous saying that don't text after drinking. I think after all, there was this really no, love, lovey-dovey hearts and all coming my way. Like, how much you loved it. That cartoon that the eyes pop out with the hearts, I was like, I'm, okay. I'm so glad. This is so nice to hear. It's always, it's just like, it's, you know, they're all made with so much, uh, so much effort and love. And, uh, and I mean, uh, this totally makes our day to hear that you enjoyed it and we could actually add a little happiness to your Friday absolutely, night. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. You have no idea how much, I mean, uh, we just enjoy coming there, listening to the music, enjoying the cocktails and the snacks that you have to give. Uh, yeah, that's it all. Uh, yeah, so okay. I've got two cocktails okay, uh, right, okay. with me, but yeah. I need to finish. So I'm going to get a, a portion of the chicken wings now. Okay. Enjoy my quiet Saturday evening at the speaking bar alone and then go home. <laughs> yeah. So, so we yeah. just have another three little questions and then we'll wind up. Yeah. Uh, Suja, please. Yeah, sure. So we'll continue from where we left off. So this was the tequila yeah. sunrise. Yeah, now this has an interesting prelude. Uh, sorry. Okay, we'll have to go to the play. Yeah. Okay, one second. Yeah. It's fine. The screen is fine. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, fine. So this has an interesting story behind this drink. It was created in the 20th century by the 20th century oil workers in the Persian Gulf who starting vodka to their morning orange juice while on the job to pep themselves up. Screwdriver? Yes. Who is that? Screwdriver. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So without a spoon to stir it, they settled on whatever was nearby or available at their workplace. And since they were oil workers, they could only find screwdrivers. So they settled down with it. And that is how the name for this drink came about. The screwdriver. Yes. Well, <laughs> Carol, isn't this your second? Uh, uh, you, you answered for the second time, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Fabulous. Okay. Great. Now, now this is a potent sweet drink made with vodka, tequila, rum, gin, triple sec, sour mix, and a splash of cola. I don't oh, think they've missed out <laughs> anything <laughs> there. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly, suddenly it reminded everyone of their college life. So yeah. <laughs> so, so it, it's called whatever I, with cola. <laughs> exactly. 
So it has in its name a popular beverage that we consume daily. Uh, Tanmay, you can speak. You can huh? uh, unmute and say the word. Tanmay, uh, whoever is in Tanmay. Yeah. Kuti, I think. L I T. L I T. Yes, you're right. This, the interesting trivia behind this is it was invented as a part of a contest to create the best the drink. to using triple sec in 72 and the name of course was inspired by a place in new york so the bartender being creative fellow he did whatever he had at hand he mixed he put a bit, bit of everything and he created and it was a big hit. it is the long island iced tea as all of most of you had guessed it uh. and brings back fond memories to a lot of us i guess <laughs> uh, i have a question young do Is there yeah. a substitute for triple sex? Because I can never find it and never have it on hand. Fine. Okay, so triple sex is basically an orange liqueur. Okay. Ah. Uh, what you get readily available is a non-alcoholic triple sex in any of the supermarkets. So the Monen does have a non-alcoholic triple sex. Okay. But uh, otherwise, you can you can use a Contro. Contro. Mm. Anything orange, even a Gramanier or a Contro can be used. Nice. And Contro even better. Far better in terms of quality than than a triple sec. Great. So now over to yeah, you. we'll move on. Okay. This was declared as the official drink of Puerto Rico. It has its origins at the Carib Hilton Hotel in San Juan in the West Indies. And the bartender Monchita Marrero dreamed up this mixture of rum, coconut cream, and pineapple juice. And I think I gave away the clue. And Pina yes, Solana. Yes, that's right. Pina. Preeti, yes, you're right, Preeti. Pina Colada. <laughs> so now uh, we'll do a mix and match now of the different cocktails that are there. So whoever knows. Can just raise your hand. I put two columns of different drinks, so I'll be sharing that on the screen. So you have to pick up the first one from the left column and match match it with the right side. So since I can't uh, see everybody on the grid, can somebody ask uh, see who is raising their hands and ask them, please, Neela or Upasana? Yeah, just put it in the chat if you're ready, and then immediately we'll know. Who yeah, one started. second. I'm just sharing that. One second. I'll just share this. Yeah, they're on the screen. I see Parul raising her hands, so should we? <laughs> Parul, go ahead. Can I start from the bottom? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Feel yes. free. So, uh, tequila sunrise. Yes. Uh, Singapore sling. Yes, you're right. Hands <laughs> on the beach. Yes. Uh, then I know pina colada. Yeah, okay. And Irish coffee. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We'll Talk with five, and we'll uh, give another yeah. person the opportunity yeah. as well. But but well done, Parul. I mean, you're just excellent. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> you know where my focus lies. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, but hold on. If nobody else volunteers, then we'll call you again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I Nikita, think Preeti Preeti is saying she wants to answer. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, Tanmay yeah. is also messaging. Okay, Even so Tanmay let's wants. start with Nikita. Nikita first, and then we'll go to Preeti, and then Tanmay. Okay. All right. We'll do two uh, two. Okay, so it's Moscow Mule. Yeah. Right. Cuba Libre. Yes. Okay. Um. Um. um, um, um. Rusty nail. Pardon, rusty nail. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so we'll then go to the next part. Do you know the interesting trivia behind Moscow Mule? No. Okay, it it actually went behind the owner. Actually, he had uh, he went to meet his friend Morgan, and uh, he saw that he had a bar, and his bartender had a lot of ginger ale, which was going waste, and and uh, Mr. Morgan had just bought Smirnoff, so he had a lot of vodka. So they just mixed both, and Morgan's girlfriend had just inherited a copper business. So she started. She gave her mugs from the business, and that's how this Moscow Mule is always served in a copper mug. I'll show you the pictures later on after this is over. 
and that was a very interesting trivia that i came across when i was putting this uh, quiz along for you all you know <laughs> ah, that explains that's one yeah. fancy drink yeah <laughs> served in that copper thing yeah uh anybody yes. else want to have free tea we waiting for you now so, uh, i know mai tai yes you're right the uh, harvey waldanger yes that's right absolutely right <laughs> and rest have been answered the ones that i know um, okay there is still uh, mint salty and sea and white to be answered on the left side mint salty yes. salty sea and white yes i can i answer yeah it's mint julep mint julep yes white rashid it's Pardon? salty white rashid Yes, right. It's uh, salty sunrise. No, tequila salty sunrise. Dog. Salty tequila sunrise. Salty dog. Yes, and sea sea breeze that leaves us with just yeah, which is a sea breeze. Yes, that brings us to the end of this. Fabulous! Thank you, Suja. Fabulous! Thanks for listening. Great that you all have enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the trivia that I put up together. Nikita, you wanted to share something about your experience? Yes. Um, thank you so much, Nikita, for this opportunity. So I just wanted to uh, talk about the wonderful experience I had in Sidecar and GK. I had a friend who was visually impaired, and he had come to Delhi, and we thought where to go, and we decided to go to Sidecar. And normally bars are not very disabled friendly, but he had a fabulous time over there, and uh, he wanted to go to the washroom also later. And I held him and I took him, but then immediately one of the barmen came and said, "You go." i'll take care of him and i'll bring him back so it was a fabulous experience over there wonderful wow thank you thank you nikita that's so nice to hear you know we didn't know about this but it's it's always so nice to hear i mean uh, uh, about your experience it's wonderful yeah and and all of us all of us i think uh, most of us here we've been to your place and we've had such wonderful experiences and thank you so much for joining us spending the time with us and thanks young doop and minakshi we enjoyed uh, the preparations now we're going to make and uh, we're going to have a great saturday <laughs> we're looking forward <laughs> yeah and night is like, still young it's only 8:15 yeah, with, yeah. With two cocktails with with two cocktail demonstrations and those approximately 12 cocktail questions you guys have become almost the bartenders not really bartenders but almost <laughs> bartenders <laughs> that's pretty really, yeah <laughs> that's pretty really interesting yeah <laughs> so thank you so much once again uh, and on that wonderful note uh, nikita shared with us um, i think it's time to say bye bye uh, thank you again for joining us bye bye Thank, thank you. you so thank much. You. Thank you. Bye thank bye you. everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Thank you everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.